Hi, short friends. Today I am teaching you how to measure progress and make sure that you're actually losing fat, not muscle or other things, hopefully not other things like bones and whatever, but how do you know if you're specifically losing fat in your weight loss journey? Let's find out. In my opinion, measuring progress is part science and part art because you have to have the data, you gotta have the metrics, but you also know how to choose the right metrics for you and your goals, psychological needs, et cetera, and also how to analyze those data points and then make changes to your program to reach your goals. You also have to make sure that you choose metrics and measurements that actually correspond with the goal you have, right? For example, if your goal is to lose weight, you might use the scale. If your goal is to lose fat, you might need some way of measuring your body fat percentage. So measuring is the first part and then analyzing what you've measured is the second part. So in today's video, I'm going to go through eight major ways that you can measure progress. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to do them. And then in part two, we'll get into more of, okay, now that we have the data points, what do they mean? How do we read them? How do we analyze them? And more importantly, how do we make changes in our fat loss plan for a lot of you guys? to actually see results and use this data in a meaningful way. Also gonna give you a real life example, which is my own. I'm gonna be showing you how I've been tracking my progress during my mini cut, my results, every weigh in I do, all of that stuff so you can see how I track it, record it, and use it to guide my fat loss. Please give this video a like if you are here because you're trying to lose a couple pounds as a short woman and you're looking to measure progress accurately for your goals and let's get into the video. Okay, we're jumping right into it with the eight types of measurements that you can take. Half of them or five of them are objective measurements and three of them are subjective measurements. I'm gonna show you exactly which ones I take, what I'm measuring for my mini cut and how to do them. So I'm in my bathroom. We're gonna start with objective measurement number one, which is the scale or your weight. And objective measurements are more numerical. They're science driven, they're number driven. They can be more triggering for some, but for others might not be. Like for me, they don't bother me. I use this scale called the Renfo Bluetooth scale. It also comes with an app. You need like a Bluetooth connection to make them chat with each other. I'll put the link in the description or up here if you wanna check out the scale I use. And I always weigh my Myself in the morning first thing naked I just stay consistent with it I take these measurements daily we'll talk about why later in the video a lot of people will ask me clients will ask me should I weigh myself before the bathroom after the bathroom can I drink water blah, blah. whatever you do just keep it consistent it's gonna be most consistent to do in the morning so I recommend doing it in the morning but whether you want to do it with your pajamas on just make sure you're you know staying consistent with that whether you want to do it before or after you go to the bathroom just stay consistent with that and that will be the most accurate for you. Literally, it's kind of self-explanatory, but I just step on it in the morning. I'm not even gonna show you that because you guys have seen what it looks like to step on a scale. The second objective measurement that I take is my body fat percentage. I use the Bluetooth Renfo scale for that as well, which measures your body composition. We're gonna talk about how accurate it is, how to measure progress with this in the next part of this video, but you can just see in the app here that it will take a lot of measurements from you, not just your weight, it'll take your muscle mass, skeletal muscle mass, your metabolic age, your body fat percentage, a bunch of things. I also do that and it's like one in the same. I step on the scale in the morning and it takes both my actual hard weight and then body fat percentage and all those other things because it's a smart scale. My third objective measurement is measurements. <laughs> That's redundant. Honestly, it was intimidating to me when I first started tracking progress because I don't like math. <laughs> this weirdly stresses me out, you guys. I don't know if that's that's a thing, I don't know. Validate me in the comments if, you've, if you're stressed out by measuring tapes. And I found a way that, you know, I've gotten used to it. Measuring is a, an objective way to take a look at your progress. It's great for those who are going for a body recomp because the scale might not change a lot, but the measurement will. And I take three measurements. I take one around my waist, one around my hips and glutes, and one around my right thigh. And that's what I've been tracking for my mini cut. You can track other areas of your body, such as your right bicep or your neck if you're trying to lose a substantial amount of weight but mostly if you are just trying to tone up, you're looking at those three measurements. I'm gonna go ahead and change into some shorts and show you exactly how to take measurements so that it's not as overwhelming for you as it was for me. Okay, starting out first with the waist. You're gonna wanna take the measuring tape where it's at one and put it around your waist and you're gonna put it around, I like to do natural waist and to me, that is the smallest area of your waist, okay? So it's usually somewhere right above your belly button where your, your waist comes in the most. 
Um, I would typically be naked for this, but I have shorts on. You're gonna go ahead and measure it right over your belly button and whatever number you get there, you don't wanna be sucking it in, okay? You wanna be not sticking it out like that, but just your relaxed, normal stance or position. And then you'll take the look down and write whatever number that you see. So you don't wanna pull it too tight and you don't want it to be too loose. Um, always kind of just, you can also think about inhaling exhaling and that's kind of your natural where you are you're not stuffing it out pushing it out or sucking it in and you'll take your measurement right there it is the end of the day for me so my measurements are going to be inaccurate right now but that's why i highly recommend you do this first thing in the morning once a week don't do this at random times of the day don't do it at the end of the day stick to the consistent time of day either you do it every time you do it it's at night or every time you do it, it is the morning i like to do it in the morning before i've eaten anything and just get my measurements like that and then record it. For your hips, I know weird angle, sorry. You're gonna do the same thing. So find the one, you're gonna put it around the widest area of your hips, which is your bum bum, okay? So you're putting around the widest area of your butt and measuring like that. Um, again, you don't want it too high up, don't want it too far down. Put it right over that wide area and then you'll see what the measurement says. In this case, it's saying 36.5 and you'll measure that and write that down. And lastly, right thigh, same thing. Uh, my thighs tend to, I just have developed quads. So I do it at the widest part of my thigh. Personally, that's what I like to do. So I bring it up here and I let it set like that. Nice, loose, again, not too tight, not too loose. You don't wanna make these little sausages, you know, when you sausage string things, don't do that. Just natural fit, not like, choking the shit out of your leg, <laughs> but just a natural thing. And then you'll write down like that. And those are the three measurements for measuring tape. The next objective form of measurements is progress photos. I like to take them in my bedroom. I take them in the same bikini every time. And you wanna make sure you do it with a backdrop that has nothing in the background. Like this is too busy. Do it on a white wall, set up a tripod or have your friend or boyfriend, husband, whatever, take them for you. And we'll do front so you just relax. You can do a pose. I like to do a pose just to see some definition. You can do side like this. You can do side pose, whatever you want. Back can be just relaxed or it can be posed. If you're gonna do posed, I also would do relaxed so you can see the changes. I like to take both or just keep it simple and do the same pose every single time. You wanna do your progress photos once a week to have some good data to look at. And we'll get into how do you analyze changes in progress photos over time in the next part of the video. I will also say, make sure that you take your progress photos before you eat anything in the morning, same time every day. I'm sure you're seeing a trend here that you take your metrics consistent times whenever you take them, just make it as similar as you can. So if it's in the morning, it's the morning every time you take it, et cetera. And again, like doing things like wearing the same clothes can also be helpful to remove any other variables or distractions. So now that we've discussed objective ways of measuring progress, more of like the data-driven numbers, I wanna talk about some subjective ways to measure your fat loss progress because this can be really important for those of you who are more intuitive or wanna go by more of a feeling rather than a specific number in case the numbers trigger you or it just feels more right to go with the feeling and letting that motivate and guide you. The first subjective way to measure progress would be habit tracking and consistency. We all know that in order to achieve a goal, we have to actually be working towards it on a consistent basis. So one way to kind of work on in a roundabout way your fat loss goals is to make sure you're being consistent on a daily basis and following your plan. So. It can be a goal in itself and a measurement of success in itself to just say, okay, this week I had really great adherence to the plan that I set out for myself and I got a seven day streak or whatever it is that you're tracking, just looking at consistency as a metric because it's more likely, right? That if you're consistent every day, that's gonna add up to something. And if it doesn't, then you need to change the plan, right? But consistency in itself is more of a subjective thing because you're focusing on habits rather than the outcomes, but it can still lead to good outcomes. So this is a really good one for working on process goals that lead to progress outcomes. The way I like to do this is in my room. I do track my consistency with this calendar. I like to physically see it every morning. It has all my workouts for the week laid out. I track my weight there as an extra little reminder. It's just a nice thing I like to do that helps me say, look at my week and look at my month and I am doing the things that I said I was gonna do. Another way to measure your progress subjectively is through food journaling. 
and your relationship with food. So you don't need to track every morsel of food. You don't need to weigh it out if you don't want to. If you want a more subjective, intuitive way of improving your relationship with food, you can write out what you're eating as a bullet journal and focus on things like, and this is gonna depend based on your goals, am I eating three meals a day? Am I getting enough protein? And you will do this by literally just writing out what you're eating for each meal. You don't need to add the quantities if that's not your thing, but if you do wanna add the quantities, you can absolutely do that as well in one of the apps like the MyFitnessPal or My Macros app. But subjectively looking at just how your food is making you feel, you can write in the food journal how you feel after every meal, how you feel at the end of the day. Were you hungry? Were you stuffed? What was your hunger on a scale of zero to 10? There's so many tools when it comes to journaling that is a more subjective way of evaluating your relationship with food and seeing if you're progressing towards your intended goal over time. Remember, the measurements you decide to put in place should correspond to your goal. So if your goal is to improve your relationship with food, this could be one subjective way of doing that if that would be helpful for you. A third example of a subjective measurement would be how clothes fit. Progress photos could also fit in subjective because photos are subjective, but how clothes fit typically is like, you know, you have that pair of pants that you bought last summer that don't fit anymore. Are you fitting in them more? Are you feeling more confident wearing them? Are you actually trying them on? Are you putting them on and are you able to wear them and be excited about that? That would be a subjective measurement of progress in terms of how are you doing and progressing in your fat loss plan. So those are just a couple ways that you can look at goals and objectives in a more subjective way where it's not as hard and like, number driven if that triggers you. I just wanted to include that there's multiple ways and you should choose uh, at least have one objective and one subjective, if not a few in your ways of evaluating your progress. Speaking of, we track pretty much all of these in more in Petite Power Premium, which is our 12 week online fitness and nutrition transformation program for short women, five before and shorter. Me and my team of registered dietitians, trainers, accountability coaches help you get and transform your life. Go through a body recomposition, right? Where you lose fat and you gain muscle. It's a plan. It's all structured and laid out for you so that you don't have to DIY your whole health journey. And just to give you an example, I'll show you what it looks like. We are tracking things like um, your goals, obviously, your weight, if, you, if that's your vibe. We are doing a strength assessment, so setting a timer and seeing how many push-ups you can get, whether that's on knees or toes. We look at how much cardio you're doing. We check out your daily step count. We include a three-day food journal so that we can estimate your macros and help you with your macro consultation. A registered dietitian does that part. We also have intuitive eating options as well. We also look at things like progress photos. These are just some of the things, but measuring progress and establishing a baseline is really important to see if you're progressing. In Petite Power Premium, we actually do these four times total. So it's a three month program. We do them before you ever start. Then we match you with your dietitian, give you your nutrition plan. Also, you get to see, okay, this is my starting point. And then after four weeks of doing our program, working with our coaches on your mindset, your fitness and nutrition, you resubmit this form. We redo your macros. So we adjust them based on your progress. We show you, here's your photos four weeks ago. Here they are now. Here's your weight. Here's da da da. Here's how you're feeling. And we show you your progress. So it's a really, really, really important part of acknowledging your own journey because your brain like literally tricks you into thinking you've made no progress and you'd be shocked to see the progress that you do make when you have a structure and you actually track it. And this is where coaching becomes so helpful and staying motivated because you're like, wow, what I'm doing is actually working. Even if I don't see it yet after four weeks, I feel it. And then now that I see these photos, oh my gosh, like I do see the difference and I can keep going. If you wanna join our February session of Petite Power Premium, we have a cohort kicking off in just two weeks. In the beginning of February, you will be so thrilled to join the session. I like the February session because it's like, New Year's rush is dying down and it's like whatever you didn't get to start in January, you get another opportunity to work on it in February, but do it for real because it's a three month program. So February, March, April, end of April, you're banging, you're ready. And you're all ready for summer, so that's not what I'm insinuating. Everyone's always ready, but you can feel your best self because that's what it's about. So if you're a petite woman, you've been struggling with stubborn fat loss, you don't wanna go about it in an unhealthy way where you crash diet or you do keto or something, this program will set you up foundationally for success, help you feel and look your best over the next three months for whatever event you have or just life or whatever. So you can check out the link below and join us. And you can also book a call if you wanna chat with me first. It's super casual convo. It is me on the phone and I'll just 
we'll see if it's a good vibe, a good fit to work with me and my team of experts. It's gonna be a great session. Okay, that's all. Okay, so now that you've taken your measurements, let's talk about how do you analyze them? How do you actually make use of them? I'm just gonna go one by one through all the ones I showed you and talk about some examples of what is a normal, like what you can expect each one to look like from month to month, what you should expect, I should say, to normalize some things that might surprise you and when you actually need to change your calories and training versus when to stay the course and not change a thing. Because how many of you guys have started a program and then when you haven't seen progress in three to four weeks, just jumped ship, you know what I'm saying? You're like, I'm out, this is not working. I'm going to go run for the next six days straight and then I'll get some results. We're not doing that, okay? So this is what you're gonna do instead. We're gonna analyze and make rational decisions based on these things here. Starting with the Bluetooth scale. Now there are some drawbacks to the Bluetooth scale, which I mentioned earlier, mainly they are not meant to be this perfect accurate depiction of your body composition at, at any given time. The way that it measures your body composition is inherently not super accurate. If you want the most accurate thing, you would go to get a DEXA scan, like an in-body scan, which I don't even do because Honestly, the value is not in the number itself, it's in the change, the delta, okay? We're looking at trends, not actual data points, and that should be all you need, so we can just do you know, the cheap and dirty version, which is the Bluetooth scale. I use the Renfo scale if you want to check that one out. I'll put another link here for it. So off the bat, this is measuring your weight. So I'm gonna start with weight and talk about what's normal, because this is gonna be the one that you guys have the most questions about. When people set off on a weight loss journey, they want the, the scale to go down every single day incrementally till they reach their goal. And now, unfortunately, that is not how it works. We are variable creatures. So we have peaks and valleys, but the peaks and valleys trend towards your goal, hopefully. So if this is where you're at and this is where you wanna go on a graph, you will not be like zoom, you will be like peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, but we're trending towards the goal. I feel weird doing that, okay. Moving on, <laughs> anyways, you will notice from my own mini cut here, just to put some real like substantial evidence into this, that I have lots of those peaks and valleys and I got sick over the holidays, so you can see my weight fluctuated even more so, but I'm still down five pounds from the beginning of December, so something's working, right? Now, this is where I need to caution you. If you're only using the scale as your form of measuring progress, because say you have a weight loss goal, not just a fat loss goal, so you have a weight loss goal, someone that you know wants to lose 20 pounds, you got to start somewhere, right? So you're measuring your, your weight on the scale. Let's say you measure yourself Sunday, a week passes, you measure yourself again Sunday, and it's only been seven days. You can expect a healthy rate of weight loss to be about a pound a week, and there's variation in that pound, okay? Between you know half a pound, even a full pound variation, which will make sense if you just hang on. If you step on the scale and you have not lost any weight, then you might think, oh my gosh, I need to really decrease my calories. I need to like restrict today. I need to go run. But if you had measured your weight every single day, you would notice that you actually went down. Say you started at 130. You went down 129.2, 128.7, 129.5, you would have some points down and then oh, it might go back up and then it might go down. So what's the point here? Don't look at a single data point, look at the average. You wanna look at the average. So over the course of a four week period, your graph or chart will look a lot like mine. I've seen this thousands of times in my clients. Weight loss is always a trend downward, not a linear line. What's helpful to do is if you're measuring yourself, measure yourself every morning before you go to the bathroom or after you go to the bathroom, just keep it consistent and measure yourself naked or in a bikini, whatever, keep it consistent, that's what matters because we're looking at trends, not data points and just note your daily weight so that you can take the average and that's what you're gonna use to evaluate if you're making meaningful progress towards your goal or not because you could be making meaningful progress and then sabotage yourself and jump ship in a panic. We've all done it, okay? Panic mode is not what we want here. We want rational, cool, calm, collected girl mode so that we can lose fat and keep it off. Moving on to body fat percentage using the, the Renfo Bluetooth scale. This is not accurate as you may or may not have already guessed. It's just an estimation. Is it accurate? Am I really 16.5% body fat? Mm, 
probably not, probably a little bit higher, but it can show you trends over time. Again, you can look at if you're trending in the direction you wanna go or if it's, you know, not. And you wanna look at this over a period of time as well, not just any single data point. Any other questions you have about the Bluetooth scale, please drop them below. You guys are always asking questions about body fat percentage and the scale, and so I'm happy to answer them below. But that's all you need to know basics. Next up, measuring tape. How do you evaluate changes in progress with the measurements. Now, changes in measurements tend to happen much slower than changes in the scale. Why? Because the scale is measuring everything, fluctuations in water retention, stress levels. Your weight is gonna change because your weight, remember, is a range, not a single number. Measurements, however, are more accurate depiction of your body composition at any given time. And so you'll see that these measurements will be more steady. So I'm just pulling mine up now. You can see my waist measurement when I started my cut was 25.75 inches on November 29th, 2022. My waist measurement is now 25.25 inches as of yesterday. So I've lost half an inch on my waist. That uh, doesn't sound like a lot, but you can see in the progress photos it's quite a bit. It's pretty noticeable, but that did take a while. I stayed at 25.5 for a hot minute, for almost 20 days. With measurements, you wanna look at this, I'd say every four weeks. Take your measurements every week instead of daily like the scale, but evaluate them over a month long period and they should be corresponding with the scale going down if you're trying to lose weight. If you're doing a body recomposition, however, where you're trying to lose fat and gain muscle, the scale may stay the same, but your measurements may go down. And that's where it's really valuable to use measurements if you're not trying to lose a significant amount of weight, you're just trying to tone up, you're trying to body recomp. Measurements will change while the scale will maintain relatively the same. So evaluate this over a longer period of time. So how do you measure or evaluate progress photos. My best advice with progress photos is it is a little bit of a blend of science and art, right? It's a bit objective, it's a bit subjective because it's you looking at yourself, which is never inherently objective. But you can definitely use progress photos to see if you've had any visible changes in body composition. Looking at these week to week will be very subtle, but month to month will become more visible and especially from day one to day 90, extremely visible if you've been adhering and you're on a good program. I just like to use these because I think they're the most motivating. Our clients love seeing their progress from month to month and it's the type of thing you have to kind of push yourself to take because no one wants to take them at the beginning, but you want to see them at the end. So evaluating these comes down to, can you see noticeable changes in your abdomen or your glutes or wherever you're looking for, you know, fat loss or muscle development, just looking at those areas to help you stay motivated. The next one's really easy, strength gains in the gym. You just wanna evaluate this based on if the number is increasing. So if you're improving on your lifts, then you're increasing the number of pounds you can lift in a given lift. That's redundant. And then you know that you are doing well. If you have not increased your lifts at all and your goal was increasing your lifts, your goal is strength and getting stronger and using progressive overload, then you know, okay, in analyzing these results, I see that uh, I'm not lifting heavier even though I'm trying to week to week, or maybe you weren't trying to, in which case you could start. It might be now that you need to look at, am I getting enough calories to fuel myself in the gym? Am I doing too much cardio? It's sabotaging my strength gains. That's how you can use the strength journal to see, am I actually making improvements towards my strength goals? Getting into how to evaluate the subjective measurements, we have consistency in habit tracking. This is pretty straightforward. If you look at your habit journal or your tracking and you see that you have not been consistent at all, you'll know then exactly what you need to do to implement and get back on the horse, get back on the wagon, and actually start being consistent. Improving your relationship with food. If you have been keeping that food journal or food diary and you're now in analyzing mode, there's a lot of different ways this could go, again, depending on goal. But if you're trying to improve your relationship with food, for example, you might look at it and say, well, I think I'm doing good because I'm more in tune with my, you know, how slow I eat or what types of foods I'm eating. If I'm getting enough protein, I'm doing well, keep going. Or you might look at your food diary and say, you know what? like. 
I missed a lot of days. I, I'm not eating any protein, really. I'm just kind of eating whatever's easy. My relationship with food is worse in the evenings. I have these cravings. You can start to look at, okay, can I have more protein in the beginning of the day to help aid that? So a little bit more involved with a food journal type thing, but if you think about your goal, at, you can use your food diary to evaluate like how you're doing with regards to that goal. Lastly, how clothes fit. You can analyze that the same way I talked about when I brought up how clothes fit. Either you're fitting in them better or you're not, right? So that's <laughs> that's that really. Uh, that's gonna basically help you figure out without weighing yourself if you need to change your plan. So to summarize, do not make a big change, a reactionary change in your plan based off of one data point, like fluctuations in the scale. I see that all too often. Trust the process, stay the course. You deserve that outcome and it requires consistency over time. So when do you make a change? When the trend ain't trending, girl, that's when you gotta make a change. But make sure you're looking at trends, not data points. So that's on measuring progress. If you guys liked this video, I would so appreciate a thumbs up to support my channel. If you use this video at all, subscribe for more content tailored to petite women. And I also wanna let you guys know, we have our February session of Petite Power Premium coming up soon. Jump in if you want help measuring your progress, determining your goals, actually reaching that fat loss goal you've had forever, we can help you do it with our team of registered dietitians, personal trainers, accountability coaches, and myself, of course, as head coach, I would love to work with you and I would love to hop on a phone call if you're not sure, you wanna talk it out, it's a no pressure call. You can book a call at the website here or just enroll for February, join the amazing group of women that are locked and loaded and ready to begin. And we'll start in a few weeks and we'll get to do all this together, which will be so, so cool. There's also other ways to work with me. If you want like a completely one-on-one -on -one experience, I just announced that I'm now taking clients. We have two out of three spots closed. So I have one more spot open to work with me one-on-one -on -one for the next few months. If you wanna check that out, you can also visit this link below, uh, it's petitepower.com slash new. And for any uh, alumni of Petite Power Premium that are watching this, I wanted to shout you out because we just released our advanced program for our alumni only, it's just for you. I'm personally teaching the February cohort, which is gonna not be how it is in the future um, as we like, you know, get this program off the ground. It is an advanced strength training program, so you'll learn barbell training, macro cycling, or sorry, carb cycling, advanced fat loss techniques, and there's way more check-ins and attention and just, uh, it's a more close-knit cohort. So if you want, if you're an alumni and you wanna work with me in the level two version of Petite Power Premium, you can check that out below as well. I'd love to see you inside. And that's all for today, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.